Hey guys, my name is David and I will be your Linode developer advocate for this video. In fact, this video is part of a series that I've teamed up with Linode to produce. The idea is that not everybody can self-host, but would like to kind of dabble, try things out, uh, test out the waters for the self-hosting uh, ecosphere that's out there. And sometimes uh, to get involved in things, sometimes it's just easier to use somebody else's hardware. So that's what we're gonna do. But in this video, what we wanna do is actually take a look at kind of a, what I would consider a good Google Drive alternative as far as file hosting and sharing using a Docker container called File Run. Head down to the description for more information about uh, anything pertaining to this setup process, as well as a link that will get you $100 in free credit to test out Linode for 60 days. So this is File Run's homepage and kind of a bold claim here saying probably the best file manager in the world with desktop sync and file sharing. Again, big claim, but I actually really like File Run. There are some limitations to the free self-hosted version that I'm not a fan of, but I think there are enough other things in here that really do make File Run a good option for file hosting. So that's what we're gonna take a look at in this video. In fact, if we head over here to their docs, uh, there's actually uh, a Docker Compose uh, file here that we're actually going to use a modified version of for our setup. Now, uh, I, I definitely encourage you to go back and at least watch the first video in this series to figure out how we got things set up for the sake of the rest of the videos in this series. You don't necessarily need to install all of the, uh, the, the containers that we talk about in this series, but definitely watch the first video and then you can kind of pick and choose uh, which of the other containers you'd like to use in your semi self-hosted setup here. So uh, I think the first thing that we really wanna do uh, is take a look at what is going on in this Docker Compose. However, as I mentioned, I did modify it. So let's take a look at my modified version of that Docker Compose file. Okay, so here is our, our, our Docker Compose that, we, that we're gonna use. Again, this one is modified. Um, so basically we've got a version two Docker Compose. We've got some services under here. The first one will be uh, a, a database. Uh, that's what the DB right here is. Uh, we're gonna use Maria Database version 10.1. And we've got some environmental variables for, uh, for credentials. The first one is a root password. Definitely change that. In fact, change all of these credentials to be something uh, specific to your use case. Uh, but we've got a, a, root, or a root password Password, a MySQL user, a MySQL password, and a MySQL database. Uh, change all of those appropriately, but when you change them here in this service, make sure that they match up down here as well uh, so that the, the two different containers can communicate with each other. So the next thing we've got is a volume. Of course, if you've watched my other videos, I like to store things in home slash docker slash the container name. And then uh, in this case, because we've got a couple of different containers, I wanna keep them kind of together. I'm gonna put file run DB as well as the other uh, file runs stuff in subfolders under file run. Uh, you can of course modify that however you'd like to as far as where you'd like to store things. Um, so just know that that's how I've got my stuff set up. You may wanna change yours for your own reasons. So after our volume here, there's one thing I forgot to put in here and that is the network. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead, oops, and paste that in there and fix that. So basically, we're declaring a network here that it's going to attach to, which is Nginx proxy manager underscore default. That's a network that we set up in the first video of this series. Uh, if you changed that, uh, if you watched the first video and changed that name, change it here as well to match your setup. Um, but after that, we've got our, our web interface for file run. Uh, our image <clears throat> will be file runs default image there. And below that, we've got uh, some environmental variables, the host, which we've got set up as DB right there. That was actually declared right up here at this first service. Uh, our database port will be 3306. Our username, or, or sorry, our database name, username, and password uh, are all here. We got all of that from up here as well. So make sure again that those things line up appropriately. Uh, this Apache run user, user ID group, and group ID, you can leave those alone. Those should be perfectly fine for this setup. Uh, we do have this depending on the database. Uh, that way it won't try, to, the, the, the web interface won't try to come up and, and deploy before the database is ready for the connection. Uh, we're going to link the database up here. Uh, we're gonna put this on port 8100. And then again, below we, that we've got volume of home, Docker file run, HTML, and then user files. Uh, you can of course map those however you'd like to, but that's how we're gonna leave this set up for this uh, demonstration. And then below that, we've got our network uh, that we're declaring down here. And then again, it's Nginx proxy manager underscore default. And because we've already created the network in a previous instance, uh, we're gonna say external equals true for this. 
So we're gonna go ahead and grab all of that. Then we're gonna come over here to our portainer. Uh, if you if you installed portainer, this is what we would wanna to use to deploy this. If you wanted to deploy this via command line, you would want to sshn, create a docker compose.yml file, and then deploy it via command line using that method. Uh, again, to keep things simple, we are going to use portainer for this. So what I wanna do is actually come over here to stacks. I'm going to click on add a stack. I'm gonna paste this in, and I'm gonna give it a name just like so. All of this should be good to go at this point. Uh, so what I should be able to do now is click on deploy the stack. We'll give this a couple of minutes to do its thing. And if everything goes well, we should be up and running in basically no time at all. Okay, I'm actually glad that failed because I screwed up. I forgot to uh, declare the network in the second container there. Uh, just like so. Uh, and then of course it threw a fit because I used port 8100 on something else. Let me verify that. Where, oh, it's right there. Uh, Vicuña, I put on port 8100. So uh, we're gonna change that to 8200. It's not really gonna matter uh, because we're gonna use port 80 anyway when we set this up in Nginx Proxy Manager, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and click on deploy the stack again. Okay, so now we can come over here to file run uh, and we can take a look at uh, the web interface. Let's take a look here. Uh, that once, usually once we see Apache 2D foreground, usually at that point things are good to go. So let's pop over to port 8200. And here we're good. So be just because this is up and running doesn't mean we're actually good to go. What we wanna do now is actually set up our domain name, or in this case, our sub domain for this setup. So let's head over to Linode. Let's go to our domains. Let's go to dbtech.tips, or of course, whatever your uh, domain name is that you're using. If you're following along, let's add a CNAME record and let's call it files. Of course, you could call this whatever you'd like to. Our alias will just be the at symbol, so it will automatically populate the URL and we'll click save. So the next thing we wanna do is actually head over to Nginx Proxy Manager and, and make sure that the domain is working and then uh, create an SSL for it and then get the file manager set up and ready to go. So what we'll do, is we'll come over here to go to port 81. So here we've got a, a bunch of different uh, domain names in there. What I wanna do is actually come over to SSLs, click add SSL certificate, uh, click on let's encrypt. And then we wanna make sure that I type, that I get the right thing here. I said files.dbtech.tips. So we're gonna type that in. Oops. Like so and press enter. And then we're gonna click on test server reachability. Cool, your server is reachable and creating certificates should be possible. So we'll click close. Then we'll agree to the terms and click save. Hopefully this will generate our SSL, get it stored here, so that then we can add our subdomain to Nginx Proxy Manager. Okay, I've seen this error before. If I click save again, it should just generate it. I've run into this a couple of times. Sometimes that happens. I'll just click save again. And uh, if it follows uh, the way it's done before, we should get our SSL now. And there we go. So now I can come over here to hosts, click proxy hosts, click add proxy host. We'll put in our domain name again of files.dbtech.tips, like so. Uh, HTTP is fine for this scheme. What I want to do though is head back over to here and grab the IP address of our web interface uh, like so. So it'll be 172.18.0.16. Of course, yours will be different, so make sure to take note of that. Uh, we're going to put that right there. We're, again, we put this on port 8200. Uh, if we're not sure, we can always go back uh, to our portainer instance and see 82. Oh, I lied. We're actually going to put that on port 80. I misspoke. We're going to put that on port 80 because we're using the internal IP address. So we're gonna call this port 80. <clears throat> and then we'll check these boxes here. We'll go over to SSL and we will say uh, files and we'll check all these boxes and click save. And then we can click files.dbtech.tips. And now we can go through our setup process. So here's our file run installation. Uh, this wizard will help you install the app with just a few clicks. So we'll click next. All of this looks good. Uh, there is no Imagic e uh, extension, but you can enable that later if you want to. We'll click next. Um, DB is our host name. We set it up in um, in our Docker Compose and our stack. We've got our, our port, our database name, our user, our password, uh, and then leave this as do nothing and click next. And just that quickly and easily, we are up and running. So what we wanna do is actually copy uh, this information right here. Uh, this is our username and password to log in to file run. And we'll click next. Super user is already populated, so we'll uh, paste that in there and click sign in. 
And now we've got File Run up and running on Linode just that quickly and easily. So the next thing we want to do is actually head over here to Control Panel and take a look at things. Uh, just because uh, the upload process of adding files and that sort of thing is very, very straightforward. Uh, let me just come over here to my download. So we're just going to grab this README down here and drag it up. And now it's available. So if I wanted to, I could right click and I could say, uh, Share web link, just like so. Right there is the web link for that. We can give them options like open in browser, force download, make it editable, or just have it previewed. Uh, lots of different options there. And if you want to, you can just remove that link and then nobody can access it um, well until you reshare it. Um, so you can do the same thing with photos and music. Um, so basically, like if you wanted to, you could right click, say upload or create folder. Uh, we'll call this um, tunes. And then you could uh, open this up and if you upload music into here, uh, the system's smart enough to recognize it. And then if you were to come into here, uh, it would actually have everything categorized by uh, by artist, by album or random. And you can just use this as a music player as well. I really do dig that about it. Um, so, so uploading files and managing files is very, very straightforward. It's very, very intuitive. So let's take a look at the control panel here. Come down to the bottom left corner. And here we've got uh, options to add new users. Uh, so just kind of fill in the blanks there. Uh, we've got roles that we can uh, add uh, for different permissions and things like that, groups, activities, web links, so that if you created a web link for a specific file, you would actually come in here and find it, find out when it expires, things like that. Uh, we've got uh, more under here for storage. So this is one thing that I will say I'm kind of frustrated with is that there are certain things that, all, that do require an enterprise license for file run to work. Uh, some of it I get, some of it I don't. You'll want to use your discretion to, to decide if file run is right for you based on just that alone. But uh, if we come down a little further, we've got branding where we can, you know, give it a, a, a title, a URL, uh, all kinds of different stuff in here to kind of make this your own instance. Uh, files, we've got the option for thumbs and previews. Uh, you can kind of adjust how you'd like these to be set up. Uh, plugins, uh, you've got uh, one of the first things that actually really made me happy about this is being able to view uh, STL files for like 3D printing and things like that. It will actually show a rendered file of uh, what that what it will look like. I really dig that. So lots and lots of options in here uh, for, for uh, default plugins. Uh, there are more in here that you can uh, come in here and turn on and off as necessary. Uh, we've got searching enabled, uh, metadata enabled, emails. Um, you, so you can set up your SMTP server here. Now, I want to put a caveat in that for two reasons. One, uh, you will need to open a ticket on Linode to open the appropriate ports uh, for uh, for SMTP to work. However, uh, in order to get notifications um, for, for that, you will, again, need an enterprise license for this to work. They do have several options on how to acquire an enterprise license based on your different needs. So definitely check that out. I will have links to this, hopefully, in the description down below. Uh, we've got logs. Uh, we've got security options for authentication. Sign up again. Sign up requires uh, being able to turn sign up on and off. Requires an enterprise license. Password policy requires an enterprise license. Uh, but there are lots of different things in here that you can take a look at to manage your server the way you see fit. And come over here to Super User and do Account Settings. And here you can change uh, your name, your password, your your you know your email address. All of that stuff is easily changeable in here. And two-step verification, you can turn that on if you'd like to do that as well. So that's basically the gist of getting file run set up as your own personal file server over on Linode. Again, head down to the description for more information about uh, anything pertaining to this setup process, as well as a link that will get you $100 in free credit to test out Linode for 60 days. Uh, I do want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today learning how to do this, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.